What's up everybody? I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. I'm Anthony. On today's video, I wanted to go over seven extremely beneficial bugs that you want to make sure that you have at least on your property, better yet in your garden. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I want to make sure I'm completely clear here. The purpose of this video is to show y'all that there is a difference between good and bad bugs. A lot of people out there who think, hey, if it's not a bee, if it's not a honeybee, then I automatically need to kill it. That couldn't be any further from the truth. There is a lot of good bugs that will come to your defense if you allow it to happen. So when you go along the lines and spraying the whole world and just pesticide the everything, there's a really good chance you're not only going to hurt the bees, but you're also going to hurt the good bugs. So you have to make sure that you're paying attention to what's bad and what's good. That way you don't just kill everything. Again, some of the good bugs will do all the work for you so you don't have to spray anything and that's the purpose of this video. I want to make sure that you are able to tell the difference between the good and the bad ones so you know what you're doing. Alright, so number one should come as no surprise. Everybody's expecting it so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Pollinators. Now I could do a whole series based on pollinators but for the sake of this video I'm going to go ahead and keep it short. I just wanted to lump them all into one category so I'm saying pollinators. That includes things like bees, wasps, butterflies, some moths and even flies. Yes. A lot of people think when I mention pollinators and I'm talking about the honeybee. Yes, it's a pollinator but it's from Europe. It's not even native to the United States. When it comes down to it there are several hundred different species of pollinators. A lot of them are bees that are native here that you don't see because they don't make honey. A lot of them live underground. A lot of them live into like hollow trees or whatnot and you'll never see them in a colony like you would a honeybee. So when it comes down to it there are several different varieties. Here are some I found floating around my garden. cannot stress the importance of pollinators. They're the ones that are responsible for moving pollen from one flower to the other or from the outer part of the, the flower to the inner part, vice versa, whatever. They're the ones that are basically giving you your fruiting vegetables. So I cannot stress the importance of them. That's why they are number one. Now number two is going to be the ladybug. Now the good thing about this is it's very noticeable and a lot of people like to see them so there's a really good chance you're probably not going to kill it. However, this is one of those pests that is affected by pesticides so you have to be careful. This ladybug right here is a voracious eater of aphids and so is its larva. Now luckily if you've been a subscriber for this channel for longer than a few months you know that I did a two minute tip on the ladybugs and their larva a few months ago because I found them on my apple tree. They were completely demolishing some aphids so I'll put that video up here or down below in the description so you can check it out. Now before I move on I want to make sure I specify one specific thing. There is a look-alike, alright, something that looks very close to a ladybug but isn't technically quite the one that you're used to. Ladybugs in my general area usually appear sometime in the early spring and go around through the summertime. They will appear in the fall but not as much. One thing that does appear a lot in the fall is an Asian lady beetle. They are very close look-alike of the ladybug but they can vary in different colors. Most of the time around here especially they appear more orange than they do red. Uh, one thing about these guys they still eat the same stuff as ladybugs but they have a propensity to bite people and dogs and uh, they even sometimes colonize inside your home so you kind of got to watch out if you see an Asian lady beetle you're probably going to know it because you're going to see multiples like they almost swarm sometimes uh, ladybugs are going to be a lot more solitary just keep that part in mind now number three is not quite an insect but it is still a bug and that is going to be spiders all arachnids because if you have a spider there's a really good chance it's probably eating bugs that you may not like now the one reason that's going to knock this thing back just a little bit is they don't discriminate they will eat good bugs and bad bugs it doesn't really matter for them but there are different sizes types all kinds of things one thing i want to make sure i mention and get through this video a lot of people see spider they go ah oh, spider gotta kill it please don't do that especially if it's inside and it's non-biting make sure you take it potentially throw it outside into your garden to maybe use it to your advantage this year alone i've come across several different varieties that have been in my garden and around my house i want to go ahead and show you a couple here now this spider is on my porch it's an orb weaver spider and it's a female because only females weave webs some of them put that little extra layer of silk to make little designs that's how you know you got an orb weaver they are mostly found in gardens and they attack all kinds of different flying insects. They are very carnivorous and they actually eat double their weight in bugs a day. So you absolutely want to have them around. This is the same type of spider, but it didn't have that extra little weave in there. Uh, it's more of a 3D web than anything else. As you can see, it's already got a baby. 
But as you look behind it, you can see all of what I've been eating. It has been absolutely feisty when it comes to eating. This here is a funnel web spider or funnel weaver spider. This is found in South Carolina. It's more or less in the grass, but this one's on a bucket on my front porch. And uh, this guy doesn't have a sticky web. It just springs out whenever it feels vibration and attacks almost like a wolf would. And finally, you have right here your daddy long legs. Everybody's seen daddy long legs. Everybody hears that, hey, they might be venomous. And yes, they are. They are truly venomous, but their fangs are too small to bite humans. But they're very good to have in the garden. I cannot stress the importance of having good bugs on your side, and spiders are one of the absolute best ones. They are extremely, extremely beneficial to keeping bug populations in check, and if you keep them in the right spots, you will have a much less problem than you think when it comes down to growing food, because again, they can kill everything in their sight. Now, next on my list is going to be praying mantises. If you come across one of these bad boys, please leave them in the garden. They will eat anything and everything. The unfortunate side is, yes, they'll also eat beneficials just like spiders. But again, they do not discriminate. They will eat whatever they come across. It doesn't matter if they have a hard shell, whatever. They will most likely feast on it. So if you have one in the garden, that's pretty much all you need unless you have a ginormous garden. The good thing about them is when they do kind of come through and they come by, you can know that you don't have to spray anything because they got the problem taken care of. One thing about these guys that I want to make sure I mention is if they are in the area, you might not see them initially, but you'll probably see the egg sacs in the wintertime because they like to leave them on stalks. They look like this. If you're out hunting, going on a hike, just walking around your property, and you see something like this, it might be a good idea to grab them and put them close to the garden. That way when they hatch come springtime, they're right there in the garden already, and you won't have to worry about spraying anything because boom, they're already there. Okay, so number five, soldier beetles. Now there are several different types of soldier beetles. I can't just speak as like they're one small little subsection because there's a quite a few of them that actually hit this category. But I will go ahead and show you a few that you're probably gonna see. These guys can be your absolute best friend because they love eating on things like the Mexican bean beetles and the Colorado potato beetles. So if you happen to see one of them or two of them in the garden and you happen to be growing beans or potatoes, keep them around, try to encourage them because yes, they will absolutely take care of that pest problem for you if you give them the chance. Now there are two types of flowers you can plant that will definitely bring them in. You can put down goldenrod or milkweed, both of which are native wildflowers to the United States of America or to North America. So if you just encourage that, if you know what they look like and you encourage them to be in and around your garden, then you can probably bet that soldier beetles will find their way there too. Okay, so number six, assassin bugs. These guys are everywhere because there are so many different types of assassin bugs. Some of them are harmful to mammals because they'll bite you. Other ones prey primarily on insects. However, if you handle them, they're probably still gonna bite you. You're gonna know you're looking at assassin bug when you see like a squash bug on steroids. They look like this. The way you can tell you have an assassin bug is usually by the mouth, all right? They're gonna have a very long, pointy, curved down mouth. It's meant to pierce the backs of insects. So they eat all different kinds of insects and they are very good to have around the garden. Like I said, be careful though because they will bite you as well and they might leave a nasty sting. So if you have your kids out there especially, be sure they watch out for these. A lot of times people kill this bug because it looks very close to a squash bug and they don't want to take their chances so they just go ahead and kill it anyway. But if you know what they look like, especially the larval form because they're usually more bright colored, then you can keep them around because they're gonna do you all sorts of favors. These things regularly go on my grapevines. They love hanging around grapevines because they like preying on the you know things that go attach or attack grapevines like aphids. So again, if you see them around, leave them be, they're awesome. Okay, so that brings me to my final number seven, and that's going to be ground beetles. Now, ground beetles are extremely important. However, that is a catch-all name because there are different species and several different types that have to be called ground beetles. Now, not all ground beetles are your friend, but for the purposes of the video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the ones in the Carapidae family, and several of them are very good for you, and I want you to make sure that you can identify them properly to keep them in the garden. Now, there are different types like the tiger beetle, And the more common, Terastichus. 
odds are if you come across one of these guys, you're gonna to wanna to keep them around and especially if they're in your garden already, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are giving them habitat because they don't like to be in direct sunlight. So if you lay down things like mulch, you're only helping them. And if you plant things that are bushy, low ground cover, like things like thyme, oregano, then congratulations, you're giving them a place to hide from birds. They are your number one defense for ground level problems. So things like nematodes, cutworms, caterpillars, slugs even, they will eat them and you won't have to worry about anything. As a matter of fact, there are some types of ground beetles that are omnivorous, all right? They eat things like weed seeds. As a matter of fact, they did a study in the Midwest, I forgot where, but uh, they put out a whole bunch of these beetles and they made sure to keep the population high and they realized they had about a 30% reduction in weed seed germination because these beetles were eating the weed seeds for them. That's amazing. So that's less weeds you have to pull as well. So if you see certain ground beetles, make sure you keep them around. I only have so much time in this video, so I'm not gonna go on and on and on about ground beetles, but if you wanna do your own research, if you wanna look down below in the description, I'm gonna put an article talking about the ground beetle because it is, again, that important. So look down below, check it out. You'll be able to see some cool stuff. All right, so there you have it. That is my list of seven of the most extremely beneficial bugs that you might happen to see in and around your garden or on your property. If you see some of these guys, please don't kill them. They are awesome. Don't spray them. They are good to have around. That's why I want to do the video. I want to make sure I clarify that I am located in North America. I'm in specifically South Carolina. I don't have any experience growing food outside of North America. So when it comes down to the questions you may have in Europe, Africa, Asia, I don't know. All right, this pertains only to North America, sorry. But I also wanna make sure I mention the fact that there are several different other species that I didn't mention in this video that are very good to have in your garden as well, like uh, green lace wings, things like wasps, hornets, they all serve their purpose. But in this video, I want to talk about the seven ones that I see all the time in my garden that I have experience dealing with because again, they are here always, all right? So hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please do me a humongous favor and give me a thumbs up. It absolutely helps me out and I would very much appreciate it. Subscribe. And I'll catch y'all later, okay? Bye.